Hey folks, I'm Grimwit from NatchEvil.com, and this is Natchian News. Ooh, ooh, new comic page design. It's been a long time coming, I know. I have the government shutdown to thank. If the U.S. government hadn't furloughed my friend Josh, he wouldn't have had time to redo the comic page. We've gone for a simpler design this time and tried to fix some of the blatant design flaws. You know how the people get forward and back buttons always mixed up with the first and last buttons? The knife and the cleaver being mixed up? Yeah, that's gone. Meanwhile, an outline has been written for the Whirlson novel I plan on writing in November. Now, my plan was to set an unreasonable deadline for a 50,000-word novel, as per NaNoWriMo rules. I know I can have the story written and edited by January 1st. See if I don't. Today's episode's special guest is my sister, Black Cat. Without further ado, let's dig into Whirlsin Gate, shall we? Whirlsin Gate. Episode 10 Harvest Mouth by Mike Rojas. Special guest voice, Black Kitty. November 1921, the corner of Blue Crow and Vulture Payne Road. I can eat more than anything, Tom X declared. He was a tall, skinny man in overalls, waving a flyer around violently inside the lounge of the Red House. And don't nobody can top me. One of the Lillian twins who was delivering drinks stopped and asked, What are you talking about? Take a look. You'll see. Big Jim, the human mountain who frequented the Red House bar, snatched the flyer away before Lillian could. He read it aloud in his unusually high-pitched tone. 1921 Wilson Gate Harvest Festival. Come and see the return of the Harvest Festival for the first time in decades. Bring the family and a healthy appetite as there will be fun, games, and a feature and eating contest. That's right, and I aim to win, and I challenge all y'all to a duel of the eaten kind. No one spoke for a long time, choosing instead to study each other or Mr. Eggs. Finally, Lillian said, The thing is, Tom, the Harvest Festival was shut down for a reason. Yeah, said another twin. Where did you even get that paper? The mayor, of course, Tom answered. Knowing groans echoed around the room. The so-called Mayor of Whirlsend was a crazy old man named St. Peter. He'd been causing trouble in one form or another since the beginning of the year. You run, little guy. It was the Man Mountain who spoke up, causing the room to fall silent. Jim, no! Yelled Lillian. Bad! You know what will happen if you eat too much. So I won't eat too much, he smirked. Tom Ake slapped his knee. About time, Sonny. You're in for a heck of a fight. One week later, between Above Street and Below Street on Vulture Pain. Big Jim and one of the Lillian twins arrived at this startlingly crowded market. The dread wheat district of Whirlson had been home to mostly farmers and craftsmen, and it seemed like all of them had shown up. If one didn't know better, they might have believed this was a normal town gathering. Lillian nodded. All right, she said. You remember what we planned? Don't worry about it, Jim replied, trying to put the contest in the back of his mind. For the last week, Lillian had been training Jim to eat just enough. It's not a matter of gluttony. It's like a bidding war. She had told him when they'd begun. How much can you eat without it being gluttony? Too little? And you lose. But too much, and... Well, just don't eat too much. Have you ever seen one of the beasts, Lillian? He asked back then. The Lillian rolled her eyes. I'm sure one of us has by now. She was referring to one of her six to ten identical twin sisters. Back at the Harvest Festival, the sky was filled with a setting sun and the clamor of the town folk. They who didn't show up for curiosity's sake were haggling for food and wares. 
To the left, Trevor Clever was looking at a shiny set of new knives, wearing Nelsey Nightlight on his arm. To the right, Bloodhead and Alvian Gogoff were showing off a race car with a 2.3 liter 4 inline cylinder engine. They purchased it jointly for the Noxus State races. In the middle, the rest of the Lillian twins were holding an all-you-can-kiss kissing booth. Six were working, and one was taking all the money. Even David Mitch Marshall showed up to speak to his tailor, Timothy Axarm, who held a booth offering free measurements next to the squash that looks like a face display. It had been unheard of for years to see everyone together like this. Well, and seeing Peter set this up? Lillian odd. For a man who isn't the mayor, he certainly can't act like it. Jim held his arm out for her to hold. Come on, let's get registered. Together, Lily and Big Jim had a surprisingly good time wandering about the center of the market and counting the people they didn't know. The number wasn't large, as Whirlsend is notorious for its varying head count, but the fact that it could count up into double digits was a striking thing all its own. Soon, Jim signed up on a list that held exactly two challengers, himself and Tom Eggs. As the harvest moon rose, it finally came time for the pair to show up and compete at the edge of the market. Tom and Jim approached from opposite sides of the table, as plates covered with steaming something and a bit of cloth were put in front of them. The mayor and a crowd of onlookers surrounded, but the opponents hardly noticed. Jim, with his tiny face yet big head, held a firm gaze with Tom, who was wearing his best smug grin. Everyone gulped, knowing what was at stake, but even the children hiding in the shadows of the market watched on with interest. It was the mayor who broke the tension. Gentlemen, the rules are simple. Before you is our secret ingredient that you gotta eat. The winner will be the man who eats more than the other. Both of these plates got ten pounds of, on the next word, St. Peter used air quotes, food, and after thirty minutes, you stop eating and we weigh what's left. Winner is the guy with the least on his plate. And remember, vomiting means forfeiting. No one wants to see used food tonight. The secret ingredient is, the mayor paused, grasping the cloth that covered their plates. He quickly yanked them loose for the two to see. Squid-like stuff! On the plate, white mist rose from gray rubbery piles of eyes and tentacles. Compliments of Dreamy's Drugstore and Soda Jerk! Taxi Smith yelled from the background through his happy green fish lips, You eat my children! Enjoy! The plates slithered and writhed, and some of the eyeballs turned to focus on Big Jim, who was recoiling in horror. Lillian patted him on the shoulder and said, You can do this, just like we practiced. Ah, uh, Mayor Peter, Jim held up his hand. Do we have food that's dead? Begin, the mayor commanded, clicking his stopwatch. Tom Akes got off the first punch, driving a screaming squid into his mouth and biting down. White juice squirted from the thing. Go! Jim, go! Cheered Lillian from behind. Jim shut his eyes, opened his mouth, and jammed a squid thing into his head. His normally small mouth opened a gap that dominated his facial features. It was wide enough to accommodate the entire squid thing in one go. After slurping down the remaining gray tendrils, Jim made a disgusted face. Dear holy God! He yelled, I can still feel it crawling inside. Tom Akes was tearing into a new squid thing, saying, No stomach, huh, son? Not to be beaten so easily, Jim quickly grabbed another gray thing and shoved it into his mouth. As the minutes passed, the crowd grew from curious to combatant. The farmers cheered on Tom, with Jim getting support from the city dwellers. Twenty minutes and six squid things each later, the two suddenly halted, took a long sigh, looked at their plates, and then at each other. Neither moved, both examining the gooey slime on their faces. Lillian withdrew into the crowd. Why'd they stop? 
asked one of the city folk. Confused murmurs rumbled across the market. You first, said Jim. No, responded Tom, mopping his brow with a napkin. What was once a race suddenly turned into a Mexican standoff. Jim pulled a tentacle from one of the things on his plate, now squirming to get away, and played with it in his fingers. Tom Aches did the same, but neither ate. Well, it's no big deal, I guess, Jim said, popping the snack into his mouth and chewing. I mean, I eat a lot more anyway, right? So this isn't really overeating. Yeah, well, I... Tom frowned at the rubbery limb. I, I eat twice this much every night. He too chomped onto the rubber. Five minutes, gentlemen, said the mayor. Oh, yeah? Jim grabbed the rest of the squid thing. Prove it. He took a big bite. I am proving it, you moron, Tom yelled, picking up his squid thing and clenching his teeth around it. Jim finished off his squid and started on another. Whoa, he said with a full mouth tentacles flailing outside his lips. I can finish this plate, and whatever you don't eat, then I just make sure there ain't nothing on my plate or yours, Tom said, half gagging on another squid thing. The two went like this, back and forth, bringing up the fever of competition once more. But instead of cheering, the crowd began to thin out as a shadow hovered over them. Even the mayor, who was focused on his stopwatch, was pulling away while he counted down. Ten. Nine, he said, backing away from the table. Jim, said Lillian, pulling the man mountain from eating. Remember the plan. It's time to go. Eight. Seven. Six, counted the mayor. Just for one more. Jim was shoving the last bite into his mouth. The shadow now blocked out the harvest moon. Five, four, three... Jim, now. Lillian pulled at the scruff of Jim's jacket. Behind her, a race car was revved up and waiting. Jim, now. Jim looked up. His hair went white. Hovering above Tom Aches was a bloated 20-foot mass of mouths and eyes and teeth and teeth and teeth. The big guy quickly mopped up his mouth and jumped away from the table, dashing to the race car with Lillian. All right, Tom, you win, he yelled while Lillian gunned the engine. The wheels threw grass behind them and tore out of the market down Vulture Pain. At their backs, they heard the beast scream like a choir and the biting noises of a thousand smiles munching up everything in sight. The chewing could be heard all the way over in the Oro district. Ah, damn, that was fun! Lillian screamed, shaking off the vision of the beast from her mind. We simply have to do that again next year. The next morning, all the food, all of the grass, and most of the wood was eaten. Although the beast of hunger showed up, most would consider the festival a success, as there was only one loss of life. Some say Tom Eggs never stopped eating. If you like Whirlson Gate or Natchian News, hit like, share, subscribe, or whatever. There's also a link in the doodly doo if you're kind enough to donate to the cause. Every dollar will be used to fund my own real-life Blood Bowl team. Go Rats Go! Go Rats Go! Go Rats Go! Music for this show was unknowingly provided by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. Check the description for a link to his website. This episode's noun was Pride. Leave a comment suggesting your favorite person, place, or thing from this episode, and I will include it in the next, forming a chain of nouns. Have nothing but fun, YouTubes. Have nothing but fun. On the plates, white mist rose from gray, rubbery piles of eyes and tentacles. I don't know why, but that, that autocorrect said testicles. It's not testicles, it's tentacles. What the fuck? <laughs>